Am I on now? Morning, Mark. Good morning. Can you guys see me? We can see you. We're All live. Right, great. Um, We're on. Good, good. I uh, just kind of made a little intro to the people that are on the live right now. Um, tell them what we're going to talk about today. Um, we can get started whenever you're ready. I'm ready. So uh, let's get going. Yeah, so last week we announced that Endurolite had joined the Nutribio family and we got a lot of questions about why this was happening and some current concerns of things we're going to what this all looks like. So Mark and I wanted to get on this Instagram live today to kind of talk to you about some of those things and put your mind at ease that all the changes that are going to take place in this acquisition are really, really exciting. So. I'm going to start off and I'm going to tell you kind of the what and why that led to this decision, but it requires a little bit of a, a backstory first, um, as far as my involvement with Nutribio and how Enduroly got started and how honestly the brands fit so well together. So I've been in the supplement industry for quite some time now as a research scientist, as a consultant, and then before Enduroly. And over that time, I had the opportunity to work with a lot of different companies, um, writing content, doing formulas, advising, and things like that. Um, and back in 2014, it's actually a funny story. I don't know if Mark actually remembers this. I sent out a bunch of messages to supplement companies, say, hey, my name's Matt. I'm a consultant in the supplement industry. I do all this stuff. And Mark reached out to me. And at the time, he's like, you are the only person I've ever responded to on a LinkedIn request to you know, help out with the company. So that was my first introduction to Mark. And I kind of worked part-time uh, as a consultant for Nutribio for a while and several other, com so, other several supplement companies, excuse me. And over time, I just, I learned a lot about the supplement industry. And what really stood out to me with Nutribio is just how they operated their business as far as uh, the quality, the transparency, not compromising on any of their products to save a buck. And that really led me to reach out to Mark and say, hey, I'd really like to exclusively work for Nutribio. And it, that's kind of what happened. I worked for Nutribio as the chief science officer for about two years. <clears throat> and then in 2017, I got this idea in the back of my head that, hey, I might want to start uh, my own supplement brand with kind of what I've learned over the years. And at that time, you know, I was doing for that one more focus on the strength athlete and whatnot. And I started to notice like the endurance crowd was really being neglected. Um, and it was, it was right for some shaking up, honestly, you know, in the past endurance supplement companies have always been focused on sports drinks and waffles. And I thought I could bring, bring a certain degree of innovation to the endurance supplement market. So I, I told Mark about it. It's like, Hey, I'm going to start this new company called Endure Elite. Um, are you okay with that? working as the chief science officer at Nutribio at the time, I said, yeah, go for it. So that <clears throat> led me and my partner, Jordan Joy, to start Endure Elite in 2017, again, with the goal of bringing high-quality supplements to the endurance crowd. And to go back just a little bit, everything I learned at Nutribio served as the foundation for what I built Endure Elite on. Again, the quality, the transparency, never cutting corners. And as Nutribio's slogan goes, without compromise, I wasn't going to make uh, watered down, you know, I didn't rely on marketing on my products. It was going to be based on the science and high quality ingredients that I would actually make a difference uh, for endurance performance. So, you know, it was a little scary starting out. You know, you never know what's going to happen. Um, in 2017, we started out with our first product uh, called Performally, which at the time was really the first to market workout for endurance app. I really didn't know what direction, you know, oh, you know, is it going to be a success? Am I going to fall flat on my face? But thankfully, uh, due to the family of the past who really believed in the product and the education and the quality we're providing, and really, really took off <clears throat> from 2017 up to the present. It was, it was honestly pretty unbelievable how fast um, the brand grew. And with brand growth, I mean, it comes a lot of different responsibilities. I was a lot on my own. And then 2022, it just got to the point where it was becoming a little overwhelming for myself to handle. Um, and I wanted the brand to continue to grow. And I know as a one-man team, like I wasn't going to be able – to do that. So I started thinking, you know, who would be great to partner with 
um, with Endura Lead that could really drive the brand forward. And really, there was only one person and one company that I would trust to do that to basically keep the principles I built in Duralee on in terms of product quality, again, transparency, innovation. And that was Mark and his uh, team over at Nutribio. So that's kind of a little bit of the backstory, the, the what and why this acquisition happened really helped in order for the brand to continue to grow and thrive. And again, Mark um, was the person to do that and his team over at Nutribio. So I'd like to turn it over to Mark now, and he can kind of explain to you what Nutribio is, <clears throat> how it was built. And you're going to really see the strong connection between the brands of, of what we uh, what we share. Thanks, Matt. Uh, first, I just want to start by saying I'm, I'm really, really excited about doing this project with Matt. We've worked together a long time now. Uh, usually in this industry, when people work together and they split and somebody wants to go out and open their own organization, uh, there's a lot of fighting and everything turns negative, but uh, in this case, it's not my way of doing things, nor Matt's, and we remain very close friends, uh, and professionally, we, we remain very close, and I think that's because we both think the same way. Uh, we think about our customer the same way, how important the customer is. We think about making sure that everything we do is directed toward the customer and not toward profits and margins and business. You know, my father taught me when I was a child. Uh, growing up, because he ran a business, that the most important thing is the customer. You, you do everything right by them, and don't worry, everything else will follow. You cheat them, you treat them poorly, and there's nothing there in the long term. And that's how I built my whole life on. Uh, so I'm really excited about this, because I think there's a huge synergy between both Matt and I, and between the people who are using our products. Not that it's the same group, one is more toward endurance and all, but it, it's the same way everybody thinks. When I look at our bio crew and I look at your group, it's the same thought process. How do I get better? How do I do something right? How do I get better today than I am tomorrow? You know, and it's all it's all about this non-compromised atti attitude toward life, and I love that. Um, what I want to do here is get you uh, comfortable with this change because I know the first thing in your mind is probably oh, big corporate takeover. First thing we're going to do is have uh, you know the Nutribio bean counters in the back office start cutting costs and doing this and that and the other thing. And nothing could be uh, further from the truth. Uh, I'm going to do Endurly the exact same way that I do Nutribio, and that is the, the, the attitude I have is that this won't be fed to my child, my son. It's not going to go to, to any customer. So I think it's important that you know a little bit about the Nutribio story. It'll take a couple minutes, but it's it's key because – Nutribio is not some huge corporate conglomerate. It's mine. I, I, I opened it, launched it back in 1996. So a few years from now, it'll be going on three decades. Uh, yeah. There is no public company or venture capitalists. It's all me and, and my team here are the greatest people uh, that I could ever wish for. And you're going to get to meet a lot of them soon. Uh, but let me, let me give you a background on me and, and Nutribio. So my background is as a, a martial artist. I started when I was about six, seven years old studying martial arts. And literally from the first day, I walked into a class and I knew this was my entire life. And it, it took over my entire life till right after college, I opened, uh, well, I opened my first schools before in high school that weren't really commercial schools, but teaching at JCCs and stuff. And uh, after college, I opened my first school and that jumped into... Uh, schools throughout New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, out in Maryland. And it was a very, fairly large organization, one of the largest organizations at the time. Um, and my whole life was built on fitness, on training, on diet. I've done every single diet in the world. Obviously, my first one was a Bruce Lee diet, chugging uh, raw eggs and orange juice. And I realized that wasn't the best idea later on, but uh, that was back when I was about 14 years old. Um, so my, my whole life, I've only done one thing for business, that's martial arts and Nutribio. And the way it happened was I started to create supplements for my team, for the black belt and the, and the athletes that were competing across the country. Um, and I just got so into supplementation that eventually I decided this is really where I want to go. And I sold my karate studios off to the instructors, uh, and uh, I opened a company called Nutribiotics. Same company as it now, just a different name. And uh, back then, we're talking 1996, there was no internet really that you could do any research on. The way you research competitors was to go to a store and buy all their products. You could look up a lot of research. I would travel 
every weekend to DC to go to the Library of Congress to sit there looking through microfilm and old research studies. But I really relied on a contract manufacturer. Uh, and that's somebody who makes products for the companies. And in this industry, and this is important for you to know, one out of every literally 10,000 brands, if there are that many, it manufactures their own products. It's a contract manufactured industry. That's not ne necessarily good or bad, but if you go to a GNC or vitamin shop, you can pretty much pick up 200 brands and maybe one of those is manufactured by themselves. The rest all go to a contract manufacturer. And Nutribiotics started that same way. Uh, because that was the only way you could do it. I was a kid at the time. I really didn't know what I was doing. And I sat down in the corporate offices and they brought all their big wigs around and we formulated products. And I did as much research as I could and we manufactured. And we launched with about a dozen products uh, somewhere in 1996. Um, and it was predominantly sports nutrition with a couple, with a few wellness products as well. Uh, and the company did very, very well. The brand took off because I had all my karate schools, and I also had a business at the time where I managed dozens and dozens of schools across the country, and I had a big following. So all my students uh, took these products, and I had going on three or four generations already where my students had black belts and their children were black belts and was going to the next generation. So there's a huge passion of following everything I did. Uh, about 1998, and this is the key to why I'm telling you this story, uh, I wanted to reformulate my products. I want to see how I can make them better. So I went to get the uh, formulations from the manufacturer. So you asked, why do I have to get them from the manufacturer when they should be on the label? But back then, every product in the market in the sports supplement industry most had something called a proprietary blend. And that means the FDA allows this. You say something about what the product, what the ingredients do, but you don't have to list the actual ingredients. Like if I'm doing a brain function formula, I can say nootropic brain function formula, three grams, and then I have to list all the ingredients under that, but I don't have to tell you the dosage of those ingredients, only the dosage of the group of them. So that's what was on my label. And I thought these are real formulas. And I used to tell people, hey, the reason we do this is because I spent so much of my own time developing this with these scientists and formulators that I don't want my competitors to be able to copy what I do. Well, in 1998, I found out that I was wrong about that because none of my contract manufacturers would give me the actual formulas of what was in my product. The ingredients were listed there, but not the dosages. So uh, I had to sue them. And when I got the formulas, I realized that my products were pure shit, to be uh, frank. You know, I, I looked at myself and I said, well, I'm like a, like a snake oil salesman here. I'm selling bottles with nothing in them. If it had L-carnitine in it for brain function, and that should have been a gram and a half, there might have been five milligrams in there. Everything was underdosed. My label was what I now call window dressing, where it looks good like a mannequin in a window dressed in you know, beautiful clothing, but what's underneath the clothing? A, a plastic mannequin. There's nothing of substance there at all. And I realized that my products were nothing. They had no substance in them. Uh, and I'm like, wow, I just didn't get this. So for the next two years, I studied this industry inside and out. Um, and I tested over 300 products across uh, uh, ranges of sports supplement and wellness products and others, and every single one was the same. It was proprietary blends with underdosed products. And it was just heartbroken. So like I said earlier, you know, the customer base were people I knew. They were my friends. They were my students. And it, student who's your black belt in karate that you work with every day for eight, nine years. I mean, these people mean something to you. And I was selling them stuff that was pure garbage. Uh, so 1998 came along and, you know, I, I thought that I had enough. I studied enough. I knew enough about the industry. Uh, I moved the office here to New Jersey from Long Island. And uh, one day I just literally said enough is enough. And I opened the doors and I took 90% of my products and we destroyed, destroyed them, close to $300,000 worth of proprietary blend bullshit products. We destroyed in two days by throwing them into dumpsters, taking ice picks and poking holes in them so nobody can grab them and pouring water inside so it would ruin it. And we destroyed it all. And the only thing I had left was like creatine and glutamine and some proteins that were just pure ingredients that you, know, you couldn't mess around with. And I started the company over and, and I made a certain amount of, five commitments at that time that I publicly made to my customers and to the, to the world. And the first is I would never have a proprietary blend in my formula again. Now that you hear now is normal in the industry, okay? A lot of brands are like that now. It's a marketing pitch for some, but it's out there. It's what customers suspect, expect. But in, back in 2001, 
there was nothing like that. Nobody even got that. We actually coined the phrase, no proprietary blends. And we were the first to ever use that. And we were first to start a whole new brand over the concept of every single ingredient in every single label is going to be listed with the exact dosage. So my customer knows what they're putting in their body. The second thing we came, I came up with is full label transparency. I want my label not to be a bunch of bullshit and marketing hype, but I want the customer to look at it and know exactly what's there. I don't want to talk about an ingredient, microdose it in a proprietary blend, and make the customer feel that it's there and they're going to get a benefit of it, and I'm just using it you know, to cut costs on my product and make them think they're getting something. So I promised that my labels would have full label transparency and disclosure. The next, no ther full therapeutic dosages. And you'll see what I'm saying here is the same thing Matt has been preaching to you all along. It's the same concept, which is that synergy that we have. Uh, if I'm going to put an ingredient in a product that's going to have a full therapeutic dosage, I'm not going to be label dressing it, microdosing it. There's all different types of terms we use for that fairy dusting where you just throw a little dust in there of an ingredient. But if it's in there, it's going to be the proper dosage so that you get the proper benefit from it. Uh, the fourth is no fillers or excipients. So after I learned that my products were underdosed, I also learned that there were full fillers. I actually had a protein called muscle matrix that was like 50% maltodextrin. It wasn't a meal replacement, it was an actual protein powder. But half of it was filler. That means you bought this two pound container and you think you're getting all protein, but half of that container was garbage just to get the cost down. Uh, and you think, I would have known about this, but I didn't. I, I was too naive. And it wasn't that manufacturers were trying to rip it off. They were just trying to save as much money on their end as they could. And I was stuck in the middle. Uh, I just didn't know that. So we got rid of all fillers in our products, all excipients. So all these different ingredients that you're in there for manufacturing processes and to speed things up, we, we got rid of all of that. Some are car car considered carcinogenic or toxins, we don't even get involved in that whole discussion. We just say most, you know, all of it. Sometimes if something we have to use to manufacture it, we will. But other than that, we just keep the product as clean as possible. And then the last is I realized that I have to start manufacturing. And a lot of people think that I manufacture because I'm saving money from the contract manufacturer to me and the margin and their markup, but that's not true. I'm not a contract manufacturer. I only manufacture my brands. I only manufacture Nutribio, we launched another brand recently, and that is Unbound and now Enduraweed. So I have this entire factory, 80,000 square foot here, geared to manufacture just these products. The infrastructure to do that costs me more than it does to actually hire a contract manufacturer to make it. I don't save anything there because I have to have a full QA team, quality assurance team on the floor. I have to have a full quality control team in a lab here. And a, and a chemist, a PhD running that lab. I have to have all the infrastructure of a full FDA registered, and we are, we've been audited now, I think six times, uh, following every single rule out there about manufacturing uh, for GMPs and manufacturing. We have to have this entire infrastructure for it. But what it allows me to do is it allows me to control every single process from the ingredient that comes in here to the manufacturing process to the product goes out that door. So that's what happened in 2001, and that's what Matt was talking about, this without compromise attitude is full label disclosure without any proper lens, full therapeutic dosages, no underdosing everything. We give you exactly what we say we're going to do, so it benefits you. We manufacture everything to the highest specifications as we can, and you know we have done this now for over, this is going to be our 20th year since we introduced the concept of full label disclosure, which you'll hear all over the place. And that's a good thing because I'm not saying that other people copy. I like that because what we've done is we've actually, this small little company here, Nutribio, has been now credited with changing the entire supplement, what's an $18 billion sports supplement industry, that we have been credited with changing it because we fought it for about a dozen years where everybody just attacked us saying it was a marking pitch it was a scam it was this and that you're not really doing it relying on your labels but year after year after year of doing it and fighting it and people realizing oh what this this is the real thing uh the industry started to make a change and another company did it in a second and a third and now like i, I would say like 10 years ago we were probably maybe 12 don't go by my exact dates Time's going too quick. I'm getting too old. But I was the only non-proprietary, fully disclosed pre-workout on the marketplace. Now, I would say 60% of them are. So there's hundreds of them that are out there, which is good. It means that the market has changed. You, the customer, is getting something that you know what's in the product. And this is what we've done. So this is the story of Nutribio. This is how we built the company. Uh, 
And this is what I want you to know because I want you to understand that there's people here behind <laughs> Nutribio. It's not this huge corporation that's coming over and trying to make some money off of what Matt built all these years. What Matt built for you and every bit of energy and focus that he put into you guys and his passion for giving you the best possible products that he could and the science that he put behind it is the same thing exactly what we do. And that's why Matt and I got along so well. And that's why I brought him in when we spoke because I can bring anybody into, into the company, but if they don't follow that same passion as I have, if they don't believe that the product has to be built without any compromise whatsoever, <clears throat> that I can't have in my company. We build our supplements different. Usually you take a supplement, you figure out the cost, what you can afford, and then you backtrack the ingredients in. We don't. We figure out what we want to do. If it's perform, like the new caps, what exactly do we want this product to do? How do we want it to do it? And once we do that, we create it. Once we create it, then we figure out the cost. And then we go to the market with the price. And if that price is more expensive, so be it. But I'm not going to cut the quality by going in the opposite direction. And that's how Nutribio has been built all these years. That's the reputation that we have here. This is my personal lab here, but I have a full lab. Uh, right in the same building here that tests every product. Uh, the factory is really behind this window over here where I walk the floor every single day and I have video cameras showing you my desks every day. Um, and this is what Nutribio is. We're the only company to this day still that tests every single ingredient that comes in here. The FDA has regulations, 21 CFR 11, that requires testing, but it doesn't require testing of every batch. The industry standard is every you test three batches, and then every year or so you test them. We test every single batch, so our, our ingredients stay in a quarantine warehouse. We test it here internally in my lab. Then we send it out to a third-party lab for, for further verification. Once a third-party lab gives our results and our PhD chemist in the lab approves it all, then it's released into my manufacturing warehouse. The same thing with the finished product. When we finish it and it comes off the line, it doesn't go out to you guys. It goes into a quarantine warehouse where they sample it, goes into my lab, my lab tests it, and my lab sends it out to a third party. And that third party lab has independent lab tests it. Eventually, the products from Endurly will do the same thing as Nutribio, where you can look at the lot number on the back, scan it into our site called checkmysubs.com, and see that third party independent lab result of the product. So you know what I say is on the label is actually in the product. So that's, that's what Nutribio was about. That's why Matt and I get, you know, got along so well. That's how Matt you know, built Enduralite. And that's why I think it's a great synergy between us. I mean, I probably get five or six companies a month, especially during this supply chain crisis in this last year in COVID, ask me to buy them out. They think, I don't know, I'm 10 times bigger than I am or not. But I, there's no need to, because what I do, I look at it and say, okay, I'm going to buy this product line out. Now Now i got to go to the consumer and say, there's a bunch of shit here. This is what I'm going to do to fix it. I don't have to do that here, <clears throat> because we both built it with the same synergy, with the same, without compromised value. So uh, behind the scenes, you guys were so, so damn lucky to have Matt behind this brand. Because I can tell you, if I look at uh, 100 CEOs, there's only a handful of them that I could say the same thing about. And it has changed. There's more and more now. The industry's getting great. But Matt has just been uh, amazing with his passion and what he wanted to build with the company. And that's why it works so well. And that's why we can do this. That's why we can join the two companies. Hey, I appreciate the kind words. And just to reiterate a point Mark made, I think a lot of you know how I am over the years. Like, like Mark said, acquisition can be really scary. You're afraid things are going to change. But I think all of you know by now, like, if the principles weren't kept in place early on or if the formula locked down, this never would have happened. And after hearing the Nutribio story, you can kind of understand why this partnership makes so much sense. There's so many improvements coming down the line. Um, so I think at this point, Mark, I think it'd be appropriate to talk about, you know, what's going to change. Um, what's not, you've already kind of hit on, on some of the things will change as far as all manufacturing, uh, being in house. Um, I think a lot of people, uh, the questions I got, it seems the most is like, Hey, are the Endurly products going to change? So I think it'd be important to address that question. Now we can kind of tell them kind of a little behind the scenes look as far as what we're planning to do. And then yeah. we 
uh, Colony Capsules as an example. Yeah, uh, I think one of the questions I saw was kind of a scary question, and it was, are Endurly products going to turn into Nutribio? So are we going to just get rid of what Matt has created all these years and take our product and slap a label on it and hand it to you? No, no. Endurly does not change it at all. It's, it's purpose-driven, and its purpose is different than Nutribio. Its purpose is driven directly toward endurance-style athletics, and the products are going to be different because that's what the company is, and it's not going to change. It's not going to become a generalized company selling a 1,000 other different products. It's going to stay what the original uh, thought process behind it the, is, and that is in products that help endurance style athletes. Uh, so we're not changing any of that. Uh, originally, to be frank, we were going to keep the company separate. I didn't even know if I was going to even let anybody know we were, we were one and the same. And one of the most uh, requested products we had was a uh, plant protein. Uh, <clears throat> so we did create a plant protein, which is almost identical to ours. Uh, but we're not going to do that again. We're, you know, we did that because I thought I'd keep them separate and not even let anybody know about it. But with the synergies I came and, and uh, Matt and I talking so much, we realized that you know, our athletes and your athletes, our consumers, your consumers, they all play off each other because they're, they're all the same type of person just trying to better their lives and, and you know, move further in their lives. So uh, the products that we're not going to be throwing 100 new products on there just to uh, say there's the products we're not going to be really doing any of that we're leaving it exactly the way it is what we will be doing though is sitting down with matt as chief science officer myself and then i have a, a team of uh formulators because i can't do it myself anymore and we want to make sure that we know all the newest science that's out there we want to make sure we see the most research out there so we want to know uh, what new ingredients that come out there so matt and i you know, sit here and we think, okay, what about this ingredient we want to add? Then I'll send it to the research team and they'll pull all that research for Matt and I to look at and see where, where we can make changes and whether this is good or not, whether it's hype, whether the research is bullshit. And, and that's how we formulate our products. And Nutribio does the same thing. Every year, six months, two years, depending on the product, we have to look at it and say, okay, something might have changed from last year to this year, just like the story I told you that started the whole concept of the crop lens. Uh, so we started with Perform Elite. And Performulate was made a number of years ago. And obviously, re it's not that we're bettering Matt's products. It's that time has changed. And now we want to look at, since the day it started, what can we do? So Matt and I sat down. And you can see the, the purpose of the uh, Performulate capsules is if somebody's going to go out do a race, they're getting on the bike for a couple of hours, they're not going to necessarily want to chug, you know, sit there and, and take a big canister of powder with them and chug it right beforehand. So this gives them a chance to take a pre-workout and it's again a, a, a focus, a purpose-driven product that is supposed to make your mind more alert, give you more mental drive, give you more mental energy, change your mood so that your mood stays up during the whole time. So it's a specific focus. So we looked at that. And if you look at the old formula versus a new, and th this is what's going to happen to other products along the way too. Uh, we looked at like uh, choline bitartrate and we switched, uh, I think it was 300 milligrams of choline bitartrate to 600 milligrams of alpha GPC. Both of them are choline donators, but alpha GPC uh, is much more bioavailable. It passes through the blood brain barrier. Uh, it also is quicker to release in the brain and that's what you want. Uh, choline bitartrate is better overall in the body because it will release over time, but you want to take this you know, 15, 20 minutes before you get on your bike or start running or whatever, you want it to start focus. So we saw that as, a, a, as, you know, more science that has come out since, the, you know, when it was first formulated, and that was a really good changeover. So same functionality, we just switched it with an ingredient that is going to be quicker release and more bioavailable. So it hits you while you're doing your exercise. Uh, we added uh, mucutaprines, okay, uh, which wasn't in there. And that is to address mood. So it addresses dopamine levels. So as you train and your training is extended, dopamine levels start to drop. Your mood starts to drop along with it. And we don't want that. So we added something like that to it. What you're going to notice here is nothing. We didn't pull a lot of stuff out to make it a cheaper product. Alpha GPC is about 10 times more expensive than choline by tartrate. So it's not like we said, oh, shit, let's, let's save some money and fool the consumer by telling him some story here. Matt's not going to allow that. And I think now that you know a little bit about me, it's the same thing. Any change is a change to benefit the person who's taking the product for the promise that we give them. 
uh, we added L-theanine. Uh, and L-theanine is something that I, I love in any type of nootropic slash stem product because there's caffeine in here. Uh, L-theanine has shown to uh, help keep caffeine active longer, but it also takes and calms the caffeine down. So you don't get the tingles and you don't get jittery, which you don't want when you're when you're doing a, you know, endurance athletics, you don't want to be sitting there shaking like that. So we added that because the caffeine is the same as, as Matt had before, which is anhydrous. It's hit you really, really quick. And dicaffeine malate, which is a slow release. So we're trying to extend it over a couple hours while you're doing your training. And this then calms it. It, it makes it last a little bit longer. And at the same time, it calms it down so you don't get any jittery feeling. But it also has other neurotransmitter effects as well. It, it helps with other neurotransmitters uh, in the brain. Uh, what else did we do here? Elevate ATP. Um, I think it, Elevate ATP is the only ingredient that we actually dropped by 50 milligrams. And that's because the science that's come out since then puts the dosage at 150. There's no need to, to, to add more on. If the science is now showing less, that money can go into other ingredients. Uh, the synactive is doubled because that's where the science is now. It used to be called, I think, actogen. So that's the same ingredient. You might see it look like we took something out. It's not. The manufacturer changed the name of that ingredient from actogen to synactive. Uh, we upped the hooperzine again because the science is showing where it should be. Um, so I think that's pretty much gives you an idea of what we'll be doing over time with all the products. We'll be looking at a product that might have been formulated three years ago or even five years ago and sitting down, Matt, myself, and the team and saying, okay, what changes have been made in research since then? What new ingredients have come up in then? What new science has happened since then? And can we better it? If we can't better it, it's not going to change at all. If we can better it, that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch the ingredients around to get the exact purpose-driven goal that we start out with. <clears throat> I don't, Matt, do you have anything you want to add to that? Or <clears throat> I think I'd just like to reiterate, like, I think a lot of people are concerned, like, you know, when your favorite running shoe gets changed, you're just, it's not going to be quite as good. But with us, uh, <clears throat> Like I said, we're going to always follow the science with the product. And if we think yeah. that an ingredient would be great to put in a certain product, we're probably going to do it. But we're never going to sacrifice, like, product quality or taking out really effective <clears throat> ingredients. So at the end of the day, we want your performance and health to be the best. And we're just not willing to cut corners um, by cutting out these ingredients that are in there now or adding others that we think will have a great benefit uh, for endurance performance uh, or recovery. Yeah, and, and you, I can think look, I, <clears throat> you can look at this supplement and see. So Hooperzine, <clears throat> which is, <clears throat> excuse me, I think the act, I think it's close to $6,000 a kilo right now. It's not a cheap ingredient. Well, this is microdose also, but it went from 50 to 100. Synactive went from 50 to 100. Uh, theobromine stayed the same. Infinity caffeine stayed the same. L-theanine was added. Rodeo Prime was added. We didn't talk about it. Uh, Velvetine was added. Alpha GPC was doubled and added. The only thing that was really taken out was taurine. And the reason we took that out is it's more macro. You need a lot of it. And since Matt came out with hydrate, you, it, there's, it's in hydrate at a higher level. You don't need it in here. So we're able to make this a little more even focus driven. And it's also the cheapest ingredient in there. So it's not like we took something out that was expensive. And we didn't take it out because it was cheap. None of that really plays. I'm just trying to give you an idea. Is, yeah, an ingredient was taken out because it was dirt cheap. It doesn't affect the price so much, but it's really been put into hydrate, which is purpose driven for that reason. And you need more of it and there's more of it in hydrate. So that they, enables us to be able to focus this product a bit better. And I think this will be a, a perfect sample of what's going to happen over the future. And maybe not as dramatic in, in, in all of them because the formulas are, are all off the charts right now. Uh, and there might be smaller changes coming to some of them. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. <clears throat> so I think, I mean, the other questions we've got, um, you know, you mentioned like supply chain is kind of crazy right now. And some Endurly products are out of stock. <clears throat> so a lot of people have been asking like, you know, when's Perform Elite X going to be back in stock? Um, when are other products going to be in stock? And I just want to mm -hmm. say manufacturing being in house now, it, it's pretty advantageous uh, for the brand as far as being able to, keep stuff in stock or getting stuff back in stock faster. So I think, again, the question is, you know, when are these uh, products going to be restocked like the Perform Elite X? Mm -hmm. Most of them are going to come within the next 30 days to 45 days. Uh, we're not, some of them we're not even going to change the formulations, uh, even though we might you know, on the next go around because we want to make sure you have them. I think it's important to understand, though, that 
being out of stock is not because of the changeover. We, you know, this change happened six months ago. It's more because of the supply chain crisis uh, that hit our industry. And if you want to read more about it, you can go to my personal page or, or go to NutriBio page uh, and go to my personal blog. And I have eight or nine articles. The industry kind of follows my articles on, on this. But our entire industry has been devastated in the last year from supply chain. Things like whey protein isolate has tripled in price and you can't get it. The lead time is six months to a year out. Creatine is 10 times the price. You can't buy bottles. You can't buy caps. I have to uh, get label paper and buy the paper myself in advance because our label makers run out of it and don't have it. And their lead times turned around. Lead times for bottles that used to be two to three weeks are now six months to a year out. It is insane what's happened. So for a contract manufacturer, most are 26 and more weeks out, which would kind of that's devastated a lot of brand because they're, they're ordering their products. They get a 40%, 30% increase in price, and that price is submitted to change in six months when they finally make it. Uh, uh, so we're bringing it in-house. It's taken us, because it's a supply chain crisis, it's taken us that long to get all the ingredients, make sure they're coming in, go through the testing process of everything. Uh, but everything's going to be rolling out over the next 30 to 45 days. Uh, so I think some of the products will be uh, the Sustain, and I think we're adding a, another flavor to Sustain when it comes out too. Uh, Recovery Elite's coming out soon to also with another flavor there as well. Uh, Perform Elite uh, X is coming out. I don't know if we're adding another flavor because we're just trying to get that real quick, so that flavor might come out afterwards. Uh, the multivitamin is already in, in, in process right now. Uh, so everything should be there. 40, I'm hoping for 45 days the latest, uh, but hopefully even before that. Very nice. I think you just hit on something too, was one of the questions, if there should be more flavors added to the product. <clears throat> People have been requesting that for, for a long time, more flavors and perform lead or sustain lead are recovery top three products. So I think people are are really going to appreciate that. And it's a lot easier for you, you to make that happen than it was with me just, yeah. you know, by myself. And again, having that benefit of doing manufacturing in house and having Michael who does all the flavoring is just really advantageous. So um, <clears throat> really excited about <clears throat> all the changes. I mean, I think I what I'm most excited about is everything is done under one roof, the research and the development the manufacturing, you know, shipping is in the house now. So that'll go out a lot faster. Dedicated customer support, uh, access to a sales force that can spread the, the word on. Just honestly having more resources to bring the brand up to another level where I envision it being. Because like I said before, the endurance market is really due for a shakeup. And I think this merger between the brands really provides a lot of opportunities for the brand to get out there a lot more and to get high quality endurance supplements into the hands of people who haven't experienced them yet. So that's, I'm really, really excited about that. <clears throat> you know, on the flavor, just to go backwards a little, uh, you'll probably see two to three flavors more of each of these products over the next six months. Uh, like I said, some will be coming out immediately when they're back in stock, but then we'll be adding more and more to those because we know you have a product and you absolutely love it, but you're taking it every day, you get a little tired of it. Uh, yeah. So we will be keeping the flavors that we have and adding a, a bunch more. So you can, uh, you can look to see that immediately with the next one and then over the next six months, more and more to come out. <clears throat> absolutely. Well, I'm looking through the list of the other questions people sent, <clears throat> and I think we've, we've hit on most of them. Um, one question was, you know, if this merger will increase the product line, I think you hit on like the plan a lot of customers were looking for, but I think like you said before, I don't think it's going to be anything crazy right off the bat where we're releasing like five, 10, 15, 20 new products like you know, every year, but instead taking our time, seeing what people want using the science to develop really good products to see if it would be good fit to our existing lineup of products in, in Endurly. Yeah, and I think one of the things we're going to be looking at is, you know, everything is purpose driven. We, we don't want to put a product out that's not needed. We want to look at what you need and then put that product out to match it. One of the things that Matt and I are looking at very closely now is also delivery systems of different products. You know, if you have a great pre-workout, but it's a big tub, you know, how else might it work for different endurance, you know, 
sports out there to take it? Is it a, a gel pack or is it this or is it that? So it's more convenient for you. So that's something we'll be investigating over over the next you know, months and out there too, is how can we take the existing products, make them better, but also make delivery systems better to be able to use with, with how you want to use them as well. And you'll see changes in there. You will see new products come out uh, and you'll see new flavors come out. So I think overall, uh, you're not going to be hit with like, everything tomorrow with all the products disappearing like some of you thought replace with a label and neutral bio on it and uh we're just trying to market all of you guys to a whole bunch of new products and get our overall shopping cart value up that we're not interested in any of that we're interested in building a long-term relationship uh with the customer the same way we do with the neutral bio customer uh and just like use the word family of fit i mean our our whole our whole company is like a family so you'll see all of our people on our social media pages Matt will post or someone will post my personal my personal uh, social media there. You can reach out to me anytime. I'm not sitting behind some corporate desk in some big company. I'm out there to talk to everybody whenever whenever they have questions. Uh, so is our whole team here pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. I think you hit the nail on the head with one thing. Like I think both of our brands are really yeah, you know, obviously we have we have great products, but the relationships that we've built over the years you know, to get to earn people's trust, not like just sending out a bunch of gimmicky marketing stuff, but actually the education behind the products, why we're changing things, why we're doing certain things away, educating on supplementation, nutrition, and training. So, I mean, that, for me personally, <coughs> excuse me, that's always been one of my favorite parts about Endure Elite is, yeah, I love reformulating or formulating products, writing content, but like, just the people I've gotten to know over the years and like some just over email, some boxes, really what I've really enjoyed most about and early. And what I'll continue to enjoy as the chief science officer, you know, just providing me no BS information on supplement nutrition and training and really pushing the brand forward and continue to earn your trust and, and your business as well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have one other question here, Matt. <laughs> or if you're changing social media or IG accounts. No, uh, Endure Elite will stay its own branding, it, it, its own customer base. We're not going to be converting you all over, you know, and trying to drop our label on it. It's, it's two, two driven, purpose-driven brands, and they'll have their own identity. We're not going to be trying to change that at all. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I think, I think we've covered most of the questions. Maybe we just leave it open for a minute or so. And see if any other questions come in that we need to be answered. But on my part, again, I just I want to thank everybody in the family of Fast just over the years for believing in the brand, believing in me, for trusting us, you know, with your dollar. That it really means a lot to me. Like there's always those frustrating points in, in running the business. You know, is this is this worth it? You know, can I continue on? Because things in business they always ebb and flow and they get tough. And it always seemed like when things got tough, I would always get an email from a customer saying, man, I, I really love your products. They did such, such, and such for me. Or man, hey, I really loved your 60-second brain bombs or your content really opened your eyes. And that's, like I said, that's been awesome to experience, you know, starting from a small podunk company in South Dakota to five years later becoming a household name and endurance sports nutrition. And that's something that I'm, I'm always going to keep in place and be here for you guys to provide that content, that value to answer your questions, to be fully transparent in, in everything we do, because that's so important to the principles of, of both brands. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think you caught that from me, Matt. <laughs> oh, nasty stuff. But I <clears throat> Uh, yeah, I agree with everything Matt's saying. And uh, we have a, a full facility here. And one of the things about transparency is, you know, we're always posting what's going on in the background. Uh, and our customers are always allowed to give us a call and come down here. And we'll give you a full tour of the facility. You'll see what we do, how we operate. You know, uh, this manufacturing facility, there, there's regulations out there that came out in 2008 called 21 CFR 111 for the manufacturing of dietary supplements. And people think it's the Wild West, and yeah, it kind of still is a bit, but the FDA, Congress passed this back in yeah, 2008, and it was adopted from 20, 21 CFR 211, which is pharmaceutical manufacturing. 
So the regulations for manufacturing a dietary supplement and pharmaceutical are not far apart. In some cases, they're even stricter. A pharmaceutical can deviate a little in their active ingredient dosage at the end. We can't. The law was written specific. If we say five milligrams, it's got to be five milligrams. It can't be on or off other than the variance within the testing. Uh, so you're invited to come down here because there is a, definitely a difference. And when you see that difference and you see what's going on here, uh, you'll understand the effort, the time, the passion. You know, I, I say this a lot, uh, and I repeat the same thing all the time, but it's not like uh, I'm selling you paint to throw in your bathroom walls, okay? This is, this is a chemical that you're putting in your body, whether it's a food or whatever it is, it has a chemical reaction in your body. You know, you think you're going to take a protein powder, and if it's bad, okay, so you don't get the results, you move on. But it's not just that you're losing the money if the product is bad. It's why is it bad? If there's fillers in it, if there's something else in there, what are those things doing to your body? Because it is a drug if you look at it that way. It, any, any supplement, any food can affect your neurotransmitters, can affect your mood, your hormones, your energy levels, uh, your sleep patterns, everything. So if I give you a product and I'm going to manufacture it shoddily and crappy, and I don't care about the ingredients, which right now, nobody gives a shit. They want to get whatever they can get right now. And people are you know, starting to say, okay, let's forget a little bit about our testing right now. We don't do that. You'll see products disappear in the future for a week or a month because I can't find the ingredient that tests out anywhere in the country to do it. I'm not going to give you an ingredient that's under where it's supposed to be. It doesn't test out. That means you might not get it for a week. I'm not saying that's going to happen a lot, but I will not ever compromise in that. Uh, and, and that's an important thing. And so if you're going to put this in your body, you've got to expect to know exactly what's in it. You know, that's why we do this no problem. If you're going to put it in your body, you want to know that you're getting the result that you were promised and you're not going to do any damage along the way by getting some other crap in there. Uh, so you're invited down here anytime. Uh, we'll post uh, on the pages, you know, phone numbers, addresses and stuff like that, my social media and and other people in the company for you to uh for you to reach out to because it's really going to be what the, the brands will have their own identity the brands will have their own groups and their own products specifically go geared to what they are but the family is you know we hope is going to merge into one big family of people who are just committed to bettering their lives you know mentally physically emotionally uh through the products that we do and through the other things they do in life and i hope uh that's what matt's always wanted and that's what we want and it's going to be the same moving forward Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. I don't think I have anything else to add, except again, thank you to the family of FAST for getting us to this point and look forward for a lot of exciting changes to uh, come down the line to make the brand even better. Yeah, I'm really excited uh, for this whole thing uh, because I think there's a lot that we can do to expand the brand in the future. Uh, Matt, you know, is, is dying to jump into these products because now he has the ability with us behind it to, to make some of the changes and do some of the things that he want to do and just hasn't had the time as a one-man show. So by joining in with us, which again is not this huge company, it's just a small family-owned, but we know what we're doing here and we do it all in-house. So having Matt on the team and, and putting this all together, I think there's going to be some great, great things coming ahead that you guys are going to love. Absolutely. Oh, I don't think there's any other questions, Matt. Any? I don't think so, but always, um, always standing by with any questions you guys may have, and we're we're always happy to answer them. Yeah, and just answer, ask any questions you have right on uh, Facebook or whatever. You guys have already seen me on there. You probably didn't know who I was because uh, it shows up as my name, uh, Mark Glazier, not as Enduralead. So I always answer as myself. I don't answer as the company. Uh, so if you have any questions for me, if I miss them or something, they'll tell me. I'll go there. But I look on there every day just like I do, you know, Nutribio. You know, I'm, I'm actively talking to the customers all the time because I want to hear what they have to say. I want to know who's behind this brand and who's going to be there for you when you buy it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off and go drink some NyQuil, I think. Get rid of this cold. <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. And thank right. you for having the trust uh, in us moving forward. I'm not yep, going to let you down. That's my promise. All right, everybody. Take care.